This is going to be your guide to obtaining Dragonite in Pokemon Quest. So Dragonite is seen as one of the most powerful Pokemon in the entire game, but it has an interesting little quirk behind it. That since Dragonite's evolutionary line are the only Dragon types in the first generation, there is no typing recipe to obtain it. So we have like Fighting, Electric, Fire, Flying, almost every typing has its own individual recipe, but that'd be a little overkill for just three Pokemon, actually just one Pokemon in the Dratini. So to obtain Dratini, we are going to have to do a special recipe, and that is going to be based off of the Blue Soda Alicube. So Blue Soda is a whole lot of blue, and fortunately for us, Dratini is a blue Pokemon. Now Dratini can be obtained through a very good or special recipe which means you will either need three or five precious ingredients as well as four or more blue so something like this will give you the Dratini and even then like as long as you mix and match and find four blue even something like this will give you a Dratini as well so depending on which ingredients you're trying to save which ingredients you're trying to use more of you can find something and it's going to be pretty forgiving as long as you have a whole lot of blue but the thing about the very good recipe is that Dratini is is in a pool of a lot more Pokemon. So if you want the best chance of getting Dratini, you're going to have to make a special recipe, and that is going to be made like this, since you can use a Rainbow Matter to fill in for two precious spots, or you just make everything a precious ingredient. You can use all four blue or all five blue for the Icy Rock, or you can use something else that you have a spare of, and then something like this will give you the Dratini. Now, because Dratini is more common with the special recipe, you're actually going to save precious ingredients by only making the special Blue Soda Alicube instead of the very good, so I recommend just dumping all of your resources into it as you go. Now another thing is Dratini evolves at level 40 and 55. So if you want a Dragonite, that means you're going to need a level 50-ish Dratini. That's why I recommend that you can try cooking with the Silver Cooking Pot. It's not going to drain all of your resources, but it is going to be a pretty big investment. So we can do something like that, and that is going to start cooking us a Dratini. Now there is an argument to be made about using the gold cooking pot because you are getting so many more levels. You could get a level 95 Dratini right off the bat. Just a couple of evolutions, boom, you almost have a level 100 Dragonite and it only costs you 25 more precious ingredients. So it really just boils down to how many spare ingredients you have. If you have a lot, go for it. If you don't, this is a very risky, very expensive thing because if you don't get the Dratini, that's going to kind of suck. But if you do, very high risk very high reward also the cooking pot that you use does influence the Pokemon that you end up getting from it so using the standard cooking pot doesn't give you any bonuses a bronze cooking pot gives you plus 50 to a Pokemon stats the silver will give you plus 100 and then the gold gives you plus 300 so you get the level advantage you also get the stat advantage but the thing is you could get bad bingo bonuses or just the wrong Pokemon so yeah it's kind of like what you want to do but if you are in the early game and you just want to get a Dratini that you slowly bond with and then go for a Dragonite yeah then you can use the basic cooking pot even though I do recommend the bronze the bronze does give you a pretty decent level advantage and it's just gonna be nice because if you use this the second that you get it and then you get a very early over level Dratini like a level 20 ish Dratini when your team is only level 15 or so is going to be very nice so yeah if you want to go for that that is going to be mostly blue ingredients which means that you can actually pretty much target Dragonite if you want to by going to the shop. But So by focusing on the blue decorations, a Cushion and the Blastoise Fountain, you can just kind of spam Dratini until you eventually get one that you like, and then evolve it into a Dragonite eventually, so that is going to be like one of the most optimal ways of getting a Dratini. Now here's where things get really interesting, because it's actually easier to train a high level Dragonite than it is for the other Pokemon, that Dratini and Dragonair, they are pure Dragon type Pokemon, and as we mentioned, there's no recipe for Dragon types, but there is a recipe for Flying, so once you get the Dragon type, or Dragonite, you can actually go for Flying recipes, which will give you the same type bonus and training, and then that can level your Dragonite sooner. So one thing I want to test out is also where the value proposition comes into play, because you can make very good or special recipes for Flying type Pokemon. Pokemon. If you want to make a special one, it's going to look something like this. You're going to need two big roots and three icy rocks, and this is going to give you a very powerful far fetch because the rarity of the Pokemon also impacts training. What happens if we just make a basic flying recipe? That is, which one's going to be better for getting the most optimal experience on a Dragonite for the amount of ex or for the amount of ingredients that you end up investing into it? So let's go and get back to this when I'm done making the recipe. Well, let's hope I get a Dratini because this video is going to be a lot more annoying to make if I don't and I ended up with a ditto I mean very how, how high level is this ditto wow 
That actually might have to stay in the video. I just got a straight up level 100 ditto with like one transform that I can max out. That's pretty cool. What I wanted to do was kind of show the comparison between just like getting a straight up gold Dratini and seeing like how the level 90s worked out. But if we get one that actually has good chance of becoming a Dragonite from the silver cooking pot, that'd be pretty good too. But as you can see, Blue cooking will not always give you the Dratini. However, that's a level 61 Magikarp. So in theory, that would just become a Dragonite in two levels, which is very good. So the Silver Cooking Pot does get a little bit of merit right there. And I'll just go and check on these when I finally get the Dratini, because that's what we're going for right now. Okay, so I finally got the Dratini, and the reason why I was going for the Gold Cooking Bot Dratini is I wanted to compare the experience rates for the spare Pokemon that you have. That if you have just a lot of random leftover Pokemon that didn't turn out to be a Dratini, I wanted to see if you can actually get a reasonable amount of level up, because they are special Pokemon. So as you can see right here, this level of 85 Almanite, that was a failed special recipe. That's going to give us one level, and that's going to turn this Dratini into a Dragonair, so let's go and do it. Now one thing to note is that if you do get a level 99 Dratini through Gold cooking uh you're kind of screwed because it evolves at level 100 but then it's stuck at level 100 so you only have a dragonair just uh something to note but also i got really lucky right here on the levels because now i'm able to go you know 97 98 dragonite level 99 and then a quick level 100 pokemon uh let's see what else happens so we just have a standard level 96 i mean we can go and use pokemon like this and that is going to push us up to level 99 and uh, i want to see some other spare pokemon as well like depending on what you get from what you can just kind of throw things in and then that's going to give you some good levels but let's go and finish off our dragonite right now so yeah, the gold cooking pot actually seems pretty worth it as long as you have some like spare high level Pokemon that you ended up with from cooking. Now I also want to compare this with the silver cooking pot, so I'm just going to put the Magikarp in right here. It's effectively the same, because we're not going to be using a same typing. So say we have one of our leftover Pokemon, yeah, it's going to be effectively the same amounts of leveling. So maybe slightly less to get that Dragonite, because there's our level 63, so that'd be two levels, which would be a Dragonite. And I do have to do the levels individually for the evolution, that just kind of shows right there. So silver cooking pot, if you can only muster the resources right there, yeah, but I think the gold is actually better in the long run, depending on how many leftover resources that you have. So let's go and just finish off this Dragonite to level 100. So there we go. That was actually a pretty quick and easy level 100 Dragonite because of the gold cooking pot, but this is where another risk comes into play. That there is so much RNG in the actual Pokemon that you receive, just because you get the Dr Dratini that you're looking for doesn't mean it's going to be the Dratini that you want. I personally just prefer having one move that has three potential move stone slots because I can auto through that and then that Dragonite is only going to be using Draco Meteor and only going to be putting out insane amounts of damage. Now if you are a more manual player, this Dragonite would probably be pretty good because you're actually using that Dragon Dance. So Dragon Dance into Draco Meteor while I have the buff, that's going to be a lot of damage right there. Maybe even put some like Sharing Stones, that means you're putting more damage across your team while Dragonite is also contributing a damaging move for itself. Might synergize with Bulk Up, I'm going to have to see how this this one plays out now these stones are actually pretty good right here i would prefer two health and then seven damage just to get like the most possible this dragonite is going to be fairly tanky and pretty strong because of it but the biggest risk is going to be from the bingo bonuses because yeah that's probably the worst bingo that we could get on Dragonite. So Dragonite can have a minus 5% weight for Dragon-type moves right here, a 20% resistance to status right here, and then a 20% damage buff to Dragon-type moves. So we got pretty much the complete opposite. It's not the best, so it's kind of like what you're willing to put up with. This Dragonite, it's still level 100 Dragonite, it's fairly serviceable, but yeah, at the end of the day, you do have to put a lot of investment into the move training as well. So that's where we can also look at some of the other things that happen with flying type Pokemon and the amount of experience that you can get from there. Now, even then, like using those flying type recipes, that's probably going to be better if you have a Dragonite under level 95, because I was just able to use rock type Pokemon of a high level. But if, say you're only able to use bronze or silver cooking pots for your flying type recipes, that's going to be really good for giving Dragonite a lot of experience or using it for the move training, because eventually that move training is going to go stale and it's going to be harder and harder to get that Draco Meteor. So let's see how the move training ends up going for the uh, Dragonite. Oh. And that special flying recipe that we made ended up being a shiny far-fetched. I was like, wait a second, that color looks a little bit off. So yeah, we just got a random shiny. Guess we can't use them. Okay, that happened. So let, yeah, let's go back to the training for the Dragonite and see how that's going to work out. The move training is going to be 
interesting. You know, it's just pure RNG. I could, I could get the Draco Meteor on the first one. Well, that means you have to go straight to move learning if it's already level 100. Or I could just farm for days and days and waste all of my Pokemon, stuff like that. So let's actually see how unforgiving it is in the beginning. So this is a Dragonite. Let's just take a random level 6 Pokemon that isn't of typing or anything like that. So that's actually going to be pretty low. But if we want to just kind of stack up the fodder and stuff like that, it could work somewhat so yeah that's gonna be our first one right here and i guess we're just going to target this one we're not gonna be able to put any bonus effects but like i said the it could be worth it because we will be able to buff up the the move that we have right there on the dragon dance but that even failed on the 80 percent chance so that's a little unfortunate right there once we take like rarer higher level pokemon still not going to look that fantastic uh, what about these level 90s still not looking that good so the doduo is probably going to give us a 100 percent right yeah yeah, so that's that's going to be ideal right there. So showing that the flying type Pokemon does have a much greater influence with the Dragonite. But here's the thing. I kind of don't want to use all my resources to, to get a Dragonite that I'm not happy with. So that's really, really where it comes down to preference for you. Do you want the any Dragonites? Like, I just want Dragon on my team. I'll take it. It's going to be strong. It's a powerful pseudo legendary Pokemon. And I'm going to make it work anyways. Because it costs so many ingredients. Like, that's where the risks come into play. You can technically just farm up the lower level recipes, but that's going to take a lot longer to get those higher level Pokemon on your side. And that's going to be Outrage. So, still a pretty good move right there. It doesn't have, like, that Dragon-type boosting. And it did show some success. Uh, let's do one more with the Doduo. So, Doduo now dropped down to 90% success rate, which means you are going to need quite a few high level Flying-type Pokemon. I'm going to risk it because 10% chance probably shouldn't happen again. There we go, but it's not the move that we're looking for. So Dragonite does have a pretty deep move pool, which does make it just a little harder. And then one last thing to end the video, I did want to kind of test how the odds were for Dratini, but also it was just better to use the stone cooking pot. So I ended up making four blue sodas, and of the six Pokemon that appeared, because I got two doubles, uh, we get we did end up with three Dratini. So three Dratini is going to be pretty good. I want to throw that Pokemon to training, just see like if it is worth it. So I feel for like the early to mid game, that if you're trying to get the strongest Pokemon that you can to kind of progress through the game, then using that bronze or silver cooking pot is going to be better for getting that Dratini on your team and then using it to beat the story. But once you have the gold cooking pot unlocked and you've made it to the end game, it might just be better to, you know, slap a level 7 Dratini in there and then just try to level it up that way. So let's see how it compares to the other high level Pokemon that we've been receiving. So we do have that level 72 Farfetch. I'm not going to waste my shiny Farfetch right here, but I do kind of want to show you how much experience this guy could potentially give us. So that's going to boost us from level 7 all the way to level 30. So not going to be enough to actually give us a Dragonair, let alone a Dragonite. And even if we have some of these other higher level ones, like a level 88, that's only going to give us level 26. Uh, it also depends on the rarity of the Pokemon. So Geodude, Rhyhorn, those are just going to be common. Farfetch'd is more rare. Abra is pretty common as well. So if you do want to go through like a couple layers of gold cooking pot as just fodder for your Dratini, it could be worth it because then you just have a better chance of getting the Dratini that you're looking for. Because, yeah, as we saw, that level 97 Dratini, while a great instant level 100 Dragonite, took an insane amount of resources and wasn't really that good in the end, but we can even see that rolling for bingo bonuses is going to be a little tricky. Oh, this one's decent i actually don't know what happens because when pokemon evolve sometimes this bottom one changes so i don't know if this hit points ends up becoming something else or if it's actually the uh dragon type move buff okay so two things i misspoke earlier because dragonair actually evolves at level 30 not 40 and then also it looks like the hit points became natural hit point healing so yeah i think dratini is just gonna have the straight plus 30 percent to uh dragon type moves and then as evolves dragonair dragonair has a 25 percent and then dragonite has the 20 percent bonus that's kind of what you're looking for so this would be good if this was just the dragon type damage but then the moves and the keystones and all that other stuff it's kind of up in the air so there we go guys that is going to be your guide to dragonite in pokemon quest um, it's pretty good. You can, this is still a very usable Dragonite, but once you make it to that late game, you have, you really have to focus on having the best keystones, the best moves, main optimization right there. Then also just kind of like splashing in a few other things when it comes to bingo. Every little detail matters, but that's what we have for now. So guys, enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.